Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and this is the speed up voiceover version of the pop-up live stream that Peg and I did today over on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel. You know, we live stream every Thursday, but <clears throat> since people are stuck at home with not a lot to do, maybe they're kind of bored, we decided to just pop up and do a live streaming session. So if you'd like to watch this stuff in real time, there will be a link below the video and on the end screen where you can go over to the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel and watch it recorded in real time. If you prefer the speed up voiceover versions that I do here on my personal channel, this is for you. So today on the pop-up live stream, I decided to gel print with some new Stencil Girl stencils that I received. This first section of it with the butterfly and the flower stencil that I'm using right now, these are from the March Stencil Girl Stencil Club. If you join the club, it's $25 a month. You get a Facebook group with a lot of sharing and interesting things going on, as well as <clears throat> the person who designs the stencil set for each month does a video and you can watch their techniques and what they did with the stencils that they designed. Also, uh, Mary Beth Shaw, the owner of Stencil Girl, she has live streams on Facebook in that group showing the stencils and what she's doing with them. And then, you, of course, you get the stencils, which is a 9 by 12, a 6 by 6, and a 4 by 4 each time. So this is March, and the big one is this kind of gridded flower stencil that I'm using. I put down some dark paint, then I picked it up through the stencil and put some bright colors on and then peeled the stencil away and picked that up. And then the next one, I used a little bit lighter colors, um, making the white in between instead of the dark. I guess we haven't gotten to that one yet. <laughs> so this is the bright colors with the dark background. You've seen me do this a lot. I really like to do it. I like to put a dark color down and then put the stencil on, pick it up everything that's in the in the holes, and I use those too as well. Um, you know, the, everything makes some great collage material here. So I'll use these on art journal pages. I'll use them in little pieces on different abstract or figurative or literal collages that I do, paper painting. I save all this, this uh, painty paper. So this time I put some lighter, more pastel colors down, and then I'm picking up everything through the stencil. So now it's the reverse of what you saw before. I have white uh, flowers and grid in between. And then I will put some darker colors down and you'll end up with the light and dark situation on the next one. So it's just the reverse of what I did the first time. I know you guys have watched this a lot. It's still fascinating to me. This is the way I like to gel print. So if you haven't seen it before and this is your first time, welcome. Uh, there's more uh, I have a whole huge playlist of gel printing and if you are at home just messing around in your studio today and you just want something to play in the background, you can put on one of my playlists like the gel printing one and there's every kind of gel printing and technique that you could possibly imagine on that playlist and the playlists are you know, on my channel there down below you'll see and on the side you can see lists of playlists. I'll also link the gel printing playlist on the end screen. Or maybe in the iCard right here, this would be a good spot if I can remember, what are we on? Three minutes and 51 seconds. <laughs> so here's the, the uh, light with the dark versus the dark with the light. Still the same type of idea, looks really cool. I just think it's neat. So gel printing, you do it with a silicone plate. You can purchase these from different companies like Jelly Arts, Gel Press, Speedball, um, even the Ranger has some sets of them and they're just, they're silicone gel. It doesn't, you know, rot or anything. It's just, you just can keep it forever. forever. And I have a 12 by 12 and a 6 by 6 here on the screen. And I'm just using them alternately, just moving them back and forth. So now this is the 6 by 6 stencil, which is really the one I wanted this month. It has an outline mask so that you get just an outline with a background like the, like I'm doing right now. And then it had, I guess that's not the mask, that's the stencil part. The outline is the stencil part. And 
I laid that down over the light colors, picked up what was in the middle of it, and then now I'm putting the mask on. And the mask is interesting because it has all different kinds of like little numbers and letters and graphic stuff on it. And there I just printed it on a scrap of uh, printed tissue paper, which looked really cool. So then once I've picked up the black through that, I'm now putting some bright colors on. So this is like kind of a three-step process now because this stencil has, has a stencil and a mask. And then I'm just going to put all pick all that up and I'll end up with a, a light background with a dark butterfly outline and colors in it. See, that's probably my, that's the coolest print, I think, of all of them. And then I'm going to just continue to make uh, a little bit more of a print here with the leftovers that are kind of a ghost print with the leftovers here. I put the, the stencil back down, picked up some paint off of it, and then um, put everything back down and picked it up again. And you'll see this one coming up. So that's kind of a ghost print of what I did before. So those are really cool. I, I decided on the live stream today that Peg and I were going to do um, a journal dedicated to butterflies. So we have we both have all kinds of butterfly st stamps and uh, stickers and napkins and I mean just you know every kind of butterfly thing I collect them because my mom's really into butterflies and I like to make things with butterflies cards and packaging and gifts for her with butterflies so I always collect that type of stuff and I have a lot of it so on the live streams coming up we're going to be working on I don't know if it's it's not next week but sometime coming up we're going to be working on art journals dedicated to butterflies because it's spring why not? So this is the 4x4 stencil that comes with the club in March. And it's just got like different sizes of numbers and they're all swirled together. Just It's just cool. Circular shapes and number shapes and I don't know. It's cool. <laughs> it's, just, it's just cool. So I'm just messing with it and doing some different techniques it's tiny, of course, and I didn't have a real tiny gel printout, so it's just in the center of my 6x6. Six six. And, of course, when I have leftovers, grungy leftover bits, I always like to pick those up with a light color. So I'm using some uh, Titan Buff or Unbleached Titanium color to pick up the grungy bits left over from that stencil. Stencil, excuse me. Huh. And... I also stuck the stencil down on my roll-off paper that you see up in the right corner there. That's just like what the, the paint that was left on the stencils turned upside down and put on my roll-off paper. So pretty cool. Now I'm going to switch to some different stencils, though I keep continuing to bring the butterfly one back here and there. But I have some other new stencils that are layering stencils. They have geographic shapes and then they have patterns that can layer on top of the shape. So I think this first one, I think it's a 9 by 12 that has all squares, I think. I didn't use all of them. I have like six of them, I think, or five, five of them. Oh, this one has a combination of squares and triangles. So you could really do some fun layering with that. You could do the square and then put half of the pattern as one of the triangles and the other half as the other triangle on top of it. And you'll see me doing some of this stuff, not today. I'm still going to play with these stencils more because I haven't really explored the layering so much. I did play with one of the, with a small six by six hexagon and I did, I don't think I even layered with that. I just used the hexagons. So the, the intent of this stencil is to layer one on top of another so you end up getting a background with a layer on the top. But there's so many other ways to use it and I'm just going to use this as, as printed pattern paper. So I put some blues and purples down, I put the stencil over it, I picked up the pattern paint, I picked it up with some deli paper, then I put some Naples yellow and some white through the holes, picked that up so then I had kind of bluish purplish with yellowish whitish on it and then now I'm just doing a cleanup print of the stuff that's left on the plate with some white. I did this all on deli paper which is is a not easy to tear, pretty durable, but thin like tissue paper paper. It's used for wrapping sandwiches and meats and things. That's the reason it's called deli paper. 
And as you can see, I did use that other one with some transparent paint, which I'm going to do right now, I guess. Um, I just wanted to use some yellow and then put it over the pattern because yellow is a transparent color. And then I did the same thing with a light green at some point just to see what it would look like if I put the yellow paint over the top of the blues. And that butterfly, I'll of course cut it out and then I'll have a yellow butterfly with patterns of blues and purple on it because yellow is a transparent paint. So then I thought, what if I use some uh, shimmery paint? This is PBO Dyna uh, iridescent paint. And this is the yellow green or green yellow. Same thing, I get a shimmery butterfly print over the print on that one deli sheet, just messing around. But I decided to continue working with this one. And so I put the mask in the hole of the stencil I put some darker colors over it and then peel back the pieces and pick it up with, I think, some uh, um, blue green or green blue iridescent, I think. So I'll put a link to the club. I'll put a link to the layering stencils. But I'm not going to link all the different paints because I don't even remember which ones. <laughs> I know there was some Dina Wakely heavy body paints. I know there was some Liquitex Basics paints in a tube. And I know I probably threw in a couple Deco Art Premium tube paints as well. And you can figure that out. I mean, you could figure it out. <laughs> I like to use tube paints, not craft paints. These are kind of like a student grade tube paint. And then I also like the heavy body paint from Dina Wakely for gel printing. These are my favorites. I don't, I don't like craft paints, inexpensive craft paints, because they have so much plaster of Paris mixed into them to make them inexpensive that they dry very, very quickly here in Arizona on my, they just dry too fast on my plate and I don't get a satisfactory um, use out of them. So I prefer the tube style paints, which uh, you can get an Arteza set for really inexpensive, and they work great on this. Um, Liquitex Basics, which is a uh, kind of a mid-grade tube of paint. Um, and then the Dina Wakely Heavy Bodies work really well for me on the plate, too, because they don't dry very quickly. It's just things that don't dry very or as quickly with more pigment is what I prefer on the gel plate. So now I've put some... Uh, what did I start with? White or off-white paint down. Then I put this ovals layering stencil, which to me looks like eggs. <laughs> it looks like Easter eggs. This is going to be a great um, Easter egg, some kind of Easter project using this particular stencil because I just think it looks like eggs. They're not exactly egg-shaped because it's a perfect oval and the egg is more pointy and then round at the bottom, you know, wider, rounder at the bottom. But I put the stencil down and then I put some... Um, Oh, I know what I did. I put copper down. Then I put the stencil. Then I put some um, off-white unbleached titanium. And then I put Marabou alcohol inks in different colors. And I ended up getting several pieces of paper because I'm soaking up the alcohol ink because I don't want to wait for it to dry particularly. But it's sticking to the paint and coming up off, off the plate. Then I... I just want to pick up whatever's left, which wasn't much, and I put another layer of copper on there to pick it up. So I got some deli paper that was real soaked, interestingly, with the colors, and then I got a couple different prints off of it, a reverse, and, uh, you know, you can see there's two different ones. And then that copper piece just has a little bit of patterning on it. It's not much. So then I thought I'd play with my watercolors. So this is... Uh, matte gel medium from Liquitex that I'm putting on there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sandwich. So I've got medium down that I'm going to put some watercolor on it just using a, a wide brush, getting it wet, slopping it on there, putting some color. I'm not like trying to draw something. I'm just putting some color on there just because the watercolors were sitting next to me and I thought it would be kind of fun. So the, the matte medium will trap the watercolor pigment in between the paper and the medium. So it becomes a permanent piece of watercolor, basically. That's the reason that I put the matte medium down. It's translucent, so you can see through it. So 
gets the first layer and then the watercolor and then the paper and when you flip it over you've got you've got a sandwich right so it makes a permanent watercolor background however it was very wet so it got a little bit wrinkly but it, it has an interesting texture from that wrinkle and I ended up getting I think three three pieces from it maybe I'm also picking up the grungy bits on the edge because I like them this last one's very very light but it looks like kind of pools of color on a white background so it's interesting and fun if you like this video I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment or question below um, subscribe if you haven't already turn on your notification bells if you're subscribed to art joy of sharing you should turn on the notifications over there because that's how you'll know that there's a pop-up when we go live over there during this time of sheltering in place we'll probably do a, a few pop-up live streams so that's the watercolor um, that second one was done on a piece of um, pick up paper that had buff titanium and that's the reason that it doesn't look white it looks kind of off-white it's really cool so then I decided uh, to continue playing with alcohol inks. These are my Ranger and Pinata alcohol inks, um, Jacquard Pinata alcohol inks. And I'm just putting them on my 6x6 randomly, letting them drip on there, spraying it with a little bit of alcohol to make sure it stays, stays nice and juicy. Now this background, I, I remembered after I started doing this that I had put some of that Liquitex Matte Gel Medium on this plate. And um, this would work better with just a clean plate because I had a little bit of sticking with the paper because of the alcohol dissolving the matte medium. So there I am just picking up, doing a couple butterfly pickups with uh, the alcohol ink through the stencil. And those will be fun cut out. Then I put the mask on there with the, all the patterns and I put some um, deco art premium tube paint on there and pick up that a little bit and this would have been a super cool print right here <laughs> i put some quinacridone gold to pick it up but this is the one that actually tore some of my paper and didn't turn out as cool as i had wanted it it was going to be so cool it really was but because of that matte medium that was already on the plate because i had so much of it um, it did some strange things with the alcohol dissolving the polymers and then getting all sticky I ended up having to clean the plate with some um, baby oil because I just couldn't get all of it up. I tried a couple times. I'm trying to let it dry. I'm like so excited about this print. It's going to be so cool. And then it's not. So you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. <laughs> you just keep going. Uh, this is where the paper is sticking and tearing. I'm like, gosh darn it just keep going so I decided I would use some uh, some more teal paint in a different brand to try to pick it up and then in the end I tried picking it up with some um, titanium buff paint and ultimately the last little bit had to be cleaned up with baby oil so that turned out pretty cool I ended up cutting that out so here we go again with uh, this turquoise paint it does okay you will see the pictures at the end and uh, that's pretty much it for this gel printing session today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.